All right, America, welcome back. I am Rich Valdez sitting in for John Tobacco and Frank Morano today. You're tuned in to Liquid Lunch. Keep it locked. We've got a lot coming up. We're coming back to the topic uh, of the hour, which is impeachment. Uh, hashtag impeach45 is trending on every social media. They're out to get the president. The media is literally working in cahoots with the Democratic Party. Some say they're working hand in glove. Some say they're indistinguishable. Uh, our guest, again, Jen Kearns, a contributor to The Hill, former uh, press secretary to the California Republican Party. Welcome back, Jen. Thank you so much. So we're talking about impeachment. We're talking about a whole lot of different things that kind of go along with that. Before the break, we left off with... Um, Chairman Schiff yeah. and his lunacy on the House floor <laughs> when he started to ad lib and just make up his own version of the transcript memo. Let's jump right back into that, because to me, my opinion, I see that and I say, if the Democrats have a solid case against the president, they're not going to overplay their hand. Why would they? They have a solid case. Let's stick with it. Right. But it seems like they're becoming really hyperbolic and, and going a little bit beyond the pale. Right. Well, look, um, plug my mic in. Um, look, I, I think this calls into question a bit some of Adam Schiff's mental fitness for office. <laughs> and I happen to know the guy who's running against him. There's a guy named Eric Early out in Los Angeles yeah. who, who is a, an attorney, a very serious person, a well-funded person that may actually give Schiff a run for his money. And I'm willing to bet that this candidate named Eric Early is probably going to run the tape back on some of these antics of Adam Schiff. And rightfully so. I, I really start to question Adam Schiff's mental fitness in this, this whole impeachment game. Um, but look, I think where Nancy Pelosi actually went awry, and, and this is a woman I greatly respect. I think she's a shrewd political operator. You might not like her personally. But boy, she's truth. she's got some political chops. As her daughter would say, she would cut your head off. <laughs> um, but I think Nancy Pelosi made a terrible mistake here. If you look at how the the issue of impeachment polls, it doesn't poll well for the Democratic Party. So seven days ago, there was a Politico morning consult report that showed the support for impeachment was only 36 percent nationwide. But in other states, uh, in those non-blue states. The support for impeachment is actually lower. It's in the low 20s. And so you look at the map, which I do, you start looking at the top 10 congressional targeted races, according to the National Journal's hotline blog, and according to the Washington Post, and according to the NRCC, impeachment does not pull well in those top 10 targeted congressional races. And I think it's going to be a big problem for Nancy Pelosi, in particular in states like Oklahoma, in Congressional District 5, where there's a, a heated race. And uh, in, in uh, outside of Chicago, in the suburbs of Illinois, uh, Congressional District 14, there are some swing districts here where impeachment does not play well. I think Nancy Pelosi is going to end up ruining the day she decided to make this official inquiry. So, Jen Kearns, putting on your pundit hat, what do you think is the real impetus driving her to do these things? Is she succumbing to pressure from the progressive left? Or is she trying to appease other members of her main base? What's your thought? There's no doubt about it. She has kowtowed to the far left wing of the Democratic Party, which is basically the only uh, block of the Democratic Party that exists today. Um, and I thought she had pretty much taken care of AOC when she called AOC down to the principal's office, <laughs> sort of had a talking to and, and showed AOC her poll numbers, um, which don't have AOC in that safe territory. You, you realize we haven't heard much from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez since the visit to the principal's office in Pelosi's office Absolutely. about a month ago. But but Nancy Pelosi somewhere along the line flipped and I think she succumbed to pressure from Nadler. I think she succumbed to pressure from the DNC. Uh, look, you have a flailing candidate out front in Joe Biden. I think the uh, Democratic Party had nothing else to do other than to make this a, an indictment and an impeachment of Donald Trump. There's no question that this is like you said earlier, 2.0, right? Witch Hunt 2.0. Yeah. This is uh, another attempted takedown of this presidency. The, the question becomes, at what point do they try a new strategy? Because I think they're trying the same thing over and over and over again. And <laughs> Einstein would say that that's lunacy, right? That that's crazy. <laughs> so at what point do we decide to say, you know what, this isn't working. The American people aren't really rooting for this. And is that what's driving them? Is that what's pushing them to say, hmm, Maybe the reason that they're not 
into this impeachment idea is because we're not saying it enough. Maybe we need to get Adam Schiff to go to the House floor and tell his side of the story, tell our side of the story the way we want it to hear. Yeah. Well, if you listen to GOP leader Kevin McCarthy, he made a great point, And he said there was actually nothing technically different than what the Dems had already been doing than what they're doing in the impeachment inquiry. And there's a far step between an inquiry and actually opening up articles of impeachment. So this does appear to be a press stunt. And you're right. Democrats keep running the same play. If you're a football fan, as I am, I grew up in the South, uh, big football gal. Uh, you, you can't continue to run the same play because the other team eventually figures it out. Uh, there are some things coming up that Democrats again are doing uh, the same playbook that they did in 2016 and even in the midterms in 2018. So the Women's March is coming back a week from Sunday. They're coming back. Oh, we uh, missed the pink that. Hats. Yes, I know you missed it, Rich. Yeah. Um, they're going back to D.C. They're going to protest on the steps of the Supreme Court the night before uh, Brett Kavanaugh and the rest of the Supreme Court take their seat for the fall session on Monday, October 7th, and they're going to call for Kavanaugh's impeachment. Now, again, this is the same playbook, the same group of people running the same message. I don't think it's going to work this time. I think they need a fresh message. They needed a, a stronger candidate at the helm, which they don't have in Joe Biden, which is exactly why you see running the same play. When you don't have a great quarterback, you have to keep running the same play because you don't have the talent on the front line. So that brings up the question of are we running enough offense when looking at what's going on with Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. And yeah. if I had a guess, I'm going to say this is pretty much going to taint him even further than he is. He's no longer going to be the favorite. He's going to, I think, continue to trend downward yeah. with support for his campaign, pushing Warren to the forefront, I think also burning Sanders again. I, and that's just my thought. I think Bernie is just a little bit too wacko, nutty professor looking and acting <laughs> for the party. And I think she's just as wacko as he is, Senator uh, uh, Sanders, uh, Senator Warren as well. But I think she packages it well. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine who's a fellow radio host, he he calls her America's mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Rizzioli. Uh, the, uh, I love I love that because I do think that's a, a somewhat accurate uh, uh, take on her. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think happens now with Biden and with Warren and Sanders? How does the whole impeachment thing play out for them? Well, I think Sanders is just a non-starter. Uh, the, the top two at this point are Biden and Warren, and Warren seems to be the beneficiary of all of this Ukraine fallout. And, and you have to wonder if Donald Trump knew this all along and, and really knew uh, that he was going to pigeonhole Joe Biden in this way. You know, Rudy Giuliani has been talking for the last couple of days that he's known about the Ukraine uh, connection with the with the Biden family um, for about 15 months. So it could be this is part of the Trump 2020 strategy, uh, possibly, but, but Warren seems to be the beneficiary of this. But if you looked at um, the news yesterday, Wall Street, given that this is a, a financial show, uh, the majority of Wall Street now says they would support Donald Trump. Even the Democrats on Wall Street said they would support Donald Trump over Elizabeth Warren any day because of how much she would damage the stock market. Well, you know what? I think you hit the nail on the head and hold that thought, because when we come back, we're going to be discussing all of the fallout that this is going to have on Wall Street. Again, this is Liquid Lunch. And uh, of course, we would not be uh, fitting if we didn't talk about how Wall Street's going to respond to Elizabeth Warren and their latest threat. Also, we have uh, Alan Tonelson coming up. All of that and more. I'm Rich Valdez. She's Jen Kearns. This is Liquid Lunch. Stay tuned.